Let's also talk about some breaking news in the last hour or so, which is about the WASPy women. Hmm. Uh, people haven't um, uh, heard of uh, them. Uh, those are the women who were affected by the uh, state changes to state pension. They are the Women Against State Pension Inequality. It's a long-running campaign for many, many years now. Um, and a new report from the Parliamentary and Health Service Ombudsman uh, has uh, basically ruled that, yes, they were not told soon enough that their state pension age was going to change. This was the decision. Um, and, and it really was, uh, you know, a, a long time ago, a law passed in 1995, setting out a timetable to raise the age uh, for retirement for women up to what men were retired. So women were allowed to retire at 60, men at 65. They were moving the retirement age for both to 65. And then, uh, just a couple of years later, it was going to be moved to, to, to 66 for both. So that meant there were a number of women who, born in the 1950s, I think, who just basically were very unlucky and happened to be at the moment where they would have had a pension at 60 and it was 66. Now, some of those were on very low incomes. They were carers. A lot of those women of that uh, age group didn't actually have, you know, occupational pensions because they were carers for their children. That was the norm for women then. Um, but um, they say, look, we, we, we knew we had enough money to survive until our pension at 60. And then, you know, a year or two or even a month before we were going to retire, we discovered we were going to retire in six years' time. Now, this was public information. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that anyone who had bothered to do what they talk about there, pension planning, would have maybe done a cursory check on when their pension age was. They say, we weren't told about this, we weren't sent letters about this until very late in the day. We've lost out and we want compensation. The Ombudsman, crucially, has ruled that some of these women do deserve compensation. However, we are looking at millions of women affected mm -hmm. by this, it's something there was some talk about ten thousand pounds per woman. Now, you know, we're talking about billions of pounds of taxpayers' I'm, money. I'm, I'm, I'm sure the ombudsman hasn't looked at this from a holistic perspective. Looked at it from a very, very narrow perspective of you know, just how the rules have changed and what communications have happened. But when you look at it from a holistic perspective, you're women who are often. Um, uh, not, not working because they were looking after children, were still yeah. getting their um, uh, state pension contributions made. So yeah. they haven't been disadvantaged in any way from that perspective. So we're talking about then wider pension planning that's in there. And how do you then define how that fits in within the changes that were mandated by the EU and that everyone wants when yeah, it comes to Yeah, this was an EU, this was a rights. European court judgment about equality. Because quite clearly it's unfair that women are allowed to retire five years earlier than men. So, so possibly compensation. The, the government should then turn around and say, EU, you, you impose this on us. We're going to sue you for the money. I'm not sure that's how it works. I, I think an awful lot of men who were forced to work for an extra five years, especially, by the way, when men live less time than women. Women live longer and can yeah. retire earlier. I've always thought that was unfair. It seems to me whenever you make a change in the pension age, by definition, there's going to be a cohort that are going to feel that they've been unfairly treated because if they'd been born a day earlier, they would have been able to retire. Yeah. There's, at some point, you have a cut-off point, and that yeah. cut-off point... Is, uh, but also, I mean, a lot of these women... Look, there were women who were on very low incomes, who were impoverished. I can live with compensation for a number of those women to help them get by and deal with debts and things. In, you know, maybe, you know, uh, maybe that's a few thousand, maybe it's a couple of hundred thousand, who knows? But the idea that... Well, we made a change in the law to make it fairer, not just fairer on men as well as women, but also fairer on the younger generation who are paying the contributions to these pensions. Um, we're going, you know, we, but, 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 but because you were affected by it, which by definition, of course, someone would be, we're going to compensate you. Rather defeats the object of the exercise, doesn't it? Yep. I mean, I've got to be honest with you, I'm 55. I'm, I'm doubtful I'm going to be retiring at that age. Yeah, I don't think any of us are going to be retiring until I mean, we're well into our 70s, I suspect, in what's going on. And, and you know, in many cases, would, would we want to? Yeah, it, keeping the brain ticking over. But you know, this, this, this is... Apparently it's very bad for you, retiring. Uh, allegedly. <laughs> um, I, I, I know a lot of people who've retired, they seem to work harder when they're in retirement yeah. than they do when they did when they're at work. But, but again, this is... I think this is a symbol of... You're too many people expecting too much and too much of a handout the, the, whole, the whole way through. I think lots of things have changed. And I can't see this coming in anytime soon because you look at the hiatus there is over getting the compensation to the um, post office postmasters. Yeah. You know, that's taken 20 years. So, you know, those in the, the, born in the 1950s add another 20 years yeah. on, there's not going to be many left. Yeah, exactly.